Hey guys, Lucas from iExplore here. Today, I wanna to talk to you about manual exposure and f-stops. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we put out a video about zoom blur, which you can watch by clicking here somewhere. And in that video, we also had to talk about exposure a little bit, and we ended up changing the exposure by a number of f-stops. And though I explained it very briefly in that video, I had a couple of questions later in the comments asking me, you know, well, what was that about? What's this deal with the f-stops and how did you do that? Okay, so today I wanna to talk all about f-stops and exposure. So, I already took a picture and I already set up my exposure, all right? And you can see this photo right here. And it's, I know this is not the most exciting, amazing spot ever, but it's a cool spot and it'll work very well to explain what I want to explain to you today. So I already chose my settings for this photo. I chose a 200th of a second for the shutter speed, f2.8 for my aperture, and 3200 ISO. And with that, I am getting the correct exposure. Everything's perfectly exposed here. What is an f-stop? Well, an f-stop is any time you change the exposure by half or by double, which means that if I increase the ISO, which is down here on my camera, if I increase it up to 6400, well, I just increased it by one stop. I doubled it. If I decrease it instead to 1600, then I've decreased it by one stop. I went by you know, went half from 3200 down to 1600. So if let's say I go up to 6400 and I take that picture, okay, you will see it's a bit overexposed. Not much, but it's a bit overexposed because the original that I took at 3200 ISO was correct. So what can I do? If I want to use this higher ISO for some reason, whatever reason, don't worry about that right now, I can balance that out by changing the shutter speed also by one stop in the opposite direction. So I made the photo brighter by increasing the ISO. So I'm gonna make it darker again by decreasing the shutter speed. So I'm gonna go to 400. Now you're thinking, wait a minute, that's a bigger number, isn't it? You know, a more shutter speed, but these are fractions. A 400th is half as long as a 200th. So therefore, if I take this picture, the shutter speed will again be, or sorry, the exposure will again be what it was in the original shot, okay? So you see it's the same. Let's do uh, one more example. I'm gonna go many more stops. I wanna go all the way down to uh, 100 ISO because honestly, on a tripod for this scene, there's no reason for me to be using 1600 ISO other than just to demonstrate this to you guys. So if I go down to 800, 400, 200 and 100. How many stops was that? Well, it was one, two, three, four stops total. Four times I reduced it by half. So that's four stops reduction. I'll take this photo just to show you. It is going to be way too dark because I made the photo four stops darker. So to counteract the change on the ISO that made the photo so much darker, I'm going to go the opposite direction on the shutter speed. So I had a hundredth of a second. I'm going to go to a 50th that's one stop brighter. A 25th, that's another stop brighter. Then I'm gonna go to a 13th, which is actually like a 12th and a half, whatever that is, but they just rounded up to 13, that's another stop. And then from 13, I'm gonna go to a sixth of a second, and that's four stops total from a hundredth of a second. And if I take this picture, you will see that it is exactly the same as the other ones. So it's not a very exciting example photo because each time they are just the same but that's exactly the point I'm trying to make is that by changing these uh, stops in the right way you can keep the exposure the same while changing the underlying settings. So that covers the basics of f-stops for the shutter speed and ISO. The numbers of it, the mathematical part of it is fairly straightforward. The numbers are really easy, well relatively easy. I don't like to say things are easy if you're struggling with it it's challenging for you, that's okay. But I do think it's easier than the next thing I'm gonna explain, which is the f-stops. And the reason is, the numbers are a little bit weird, okay? The numbers don't double and halve the way you would expect. So for example, currently I'm an f2.8. If I go up to double that, so let's say 5.6, so if 2.8 times two is 5.6, actually that was two stops darker. So first of all, you need to know, and I'm sure many of you already know, this is a thing that everyone covers, but if you don't know, you're gonna learn it right now. When you go up on the F numbers, the photo gets darker. And when you go down on the F numbers, the photo gets brighter. So if I go down to two, that's brighter, and up to four, that's darker. Now, they, the number itself doubles every other stop, okay? You just have to kind of memorize it. 
the basic chart of f-stops we're going to have right here at the bottom of the screen okay for you to look at they go from 2 to 2.8 to 4 and so on okay um, there is a little bit of a hack a little trick that you can remember to help you learn it in the beginning but i don't need to rely on this don't rely on this but all these settings whether it's iso shutter speed or aperture on the dial on pretty much every camera there are exceptions but most cameras it's three clicks apart so if i go one two three that's one stop okay and i'll prove it to you because i went three stops or sorry three clicks meaning one stop up to f4 so i made these fo this photo darker so i'm going to make it brighter by doing the same thing on the shutter speed so i'm going to go to a third of a second okay also three clicks and i'm going to take that picture there you go same exposure again and we'll do that one, one more time we'll keep going so from f4 i can go up to 5.6 and then i'm going to go to like one and one fifth this like one over 1.6 this weird number but this is another stop take a picture it's the same i'm going to keep going three clicks here three clicks here so f8 and one 1.3 seconds there we go i'll do it one more time i'm going to go up to uh, 2.5 seconds and f11 over here and finally that's the last example two and a half seconds and there you go all these exposures are exactly the same even though i was changing those settings so that's how the f-stops work uh, please review the video watch that again if you need to so you can kind of let it sink in and then get out there and practice now, you don't need to use these this method of thinking about things for every single shot often i am using aperture mode but when i am shooting on manual this is how i do it this is how I adjust things as I need different shutter speeds or different apertures for different situations. I just want to say a couple more things about the other aspects of these three settings, shutter, aperture, and ISO. All of them, as you saw, control the amount of light that goes into the camera. That is the main purpose of these three settings, and every single camera has this. Um, it's all about letting in light, and in the case of ISO, the sensitivity to light, and therefore producing a particular exposure. So you have three ways to adjust your exposure, but they come with secondary effects. The shutter speed affects motion blur. So longer shutter speeds give you more motion blur, faster shutter speeds give you less motion blur. The ISO, the lower it is, generally we would say the photo is of a higher quality. As you raise the ISO, the most obvious change is you will get more noise in the photo, but also in many cases, you'll get a little bit reduced dynamic range and a little bit reduced color depth on most cameras. I'm not going to go into details about that. That could be another video someday, but it's there. That does happen. And the last, lastly, the aperture affects what we call the depth of field, which again, I'll cover in another video. So today, I didn't want to talk about those things and muddy the waters. I just wanted to focus on the exposure aspect and the idea of f-stops. So I hope I've covered that for you guys and I hope you found it useful. And remember, get out there and always challenge your eye.